Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome dear viewers to a journey through the annals of history where tales of wisdom and enlightenment await. Have we ever heard of a man whose insights into society and politics still resonate centuries after his time? Mir ibn Khaladun, a remarkable figure whose life and ideas continue to influence and our understanding of history and social sciences. The life story of Ibn Khaladun, whose full name is Abdurrahman Ibn Khaladun, stands out among the scholars in both Muslim world and the West, especially in the realm of the social sciences. We know a lot about Ibn Khaladun's life because he wrote about it himself, detailing his experiences up until 1405, just before he passed away. He was born in Tunis into the Khaladun family, which traces its roots back to an Arab tribe in Hadramaut region of South Arabia. His ancestors settled in Seville, Andalusia during the early Arab conquest of the Iberian Peninsula. Later they moved to North Africa after the Reconquista and settled in Tunis in the 13th century. One of Ibn Khaladun's notable ancestors, Kareb, rebelled against the Umayyad rulers in Seville and established a semi-independent state there uh, towards the end of the 9th century. The Khaladun's family played a significant role in the political leadership of Seville. Khaladun bin Uthman, one of the Khaladun's forefathers, founded the family in Carmona, Andalusia, with a group of the people from Hadramaut. Two of his sons, Kurab and Khalid, were involved in successful revolt against the Umayyad's rulers in Seville in 9th and 10th centuries. The Khaladun family gained prominence as politicians and scholars during this time. Despite Kurab's eventual death, the Khaladun continued to reside in Seville throughout the Umayyad period. Their influence grew after the conquest of Seville by Kaab bin Abad, who appointed them to ministerial and other positions in the latter half, the latter half of the 11th century. During this period, Ibn Abad formed an alliance with Yusuf ibn Tashifin, the al muravid rulers of North Africa, and together they defeated Alfonso VI, the king of Castile, in 1086. Dear audience, following the decline of al muravid ruler in Andalusia, the al muhad took over from 1147 to 1275. During this period, the Banu Khaladun maintained their influence, particularly under the leadership of Abu Habs, head of the Hintata tribe, who became the ruler of Seville and Western Andalusia. As al muhad power weakened, the territories gradually fell to the king of Castile, Abu Zakaria, Abu Habs' friends, and moved to in uh, moved to Tunis in 1202, declaring himself the independent ruler. Meanwhile, Ibn Khaladun's great grandfather Abu Bakr Muhammad was appointed director of finance by Abu Ishaq, the brother of Al Mustansir, who then made Ibn Khaladun grandfather Muhammad, Chem Muhammad Chamberlain to the Crown Prince Abu Faris. During this time, the authority of Habsids weakened, leading to a power struggle. A pretender to the throne, Ibn Imra, seized power, killing Abu Bakr bin Khaladun and seizing his wealth. Despite these challenges, Muhammad ibn Khaladun's grandfather remained at the Habsids' court until Tunis was taken by Abu Ihya ibn Lahyan, during which he served as the chamberlain for the period before his death in 1337. The tradition of holding significant positions persisted in Ibn Khaladun's family even after their uh, move from Andalusia to North Africa. They settled in Tunis, where Ibn Khaladun was born. Historians typically divide Ibn Khaladun's family into three distinct periods. The first is spent 20 years encompassing his childhood, youth, and education. Following this, after this, he dedicated 20 years to further his studies and working for various rulers. The final period, less than 30 years, was characterized by his roles as, uh, his roles as a scholar, teacher, and magistrate. Born in the month of Ramadan in 1332, Ibn Khaladun studied a range of uh, Islamic sciences, including Quranic recitation and the styles, Quranic orthography, Malikate jurisprudence, the Hadith, a tradition of the Prophet, and even the poetry. 
He learned from several renowned scholars and received permission to teach language and law. Despite political instability during the Mernid's ruler in Tunis under Abu Hassan and his son Ibn Khaladun benefited from the presence of the great scholars accompanying Abu Hassan. During the Hafsid reign, Ibn Khaladun was appointed as the master of signature by powerful chamberlain Abu Muhammad bin Tafraghan. However, he was dissatisfied in this role, longing for his previous intellectual pursuits under his earlier mentors, many of whom had died or left Tunis or perished during the Great Plague in 1348, and the same plague has also claimed Ibn Khaladun's parents. In 1352, Ibn Khaladun seized an opportunity to escape from the despotic rule of Ifn Tafraghan. When the ruler of Constantine, Abu Zayd marched on Tunis, Ibn Khaladun managed to slip away from, Tunis, from Tunisian camp. He journeyed westward, seeking refuge and aid along the way. In Tlemkin, he met Sultan Abu Inan, who warmly welcomed him. Ibn Khaladun then accompanied the chamberlain Ibn Abu Amr to Bogi, where he witnessed and participated in city's conquest. He remained in Bogi until the end of 1353, and upon returning to Fez, Sultan Abu Ainan gathered his scholars and Ibn Khaladun's name came up during the selection process for his scholars to participate in discussions and consultations. He was eventually appointed to the scientific council of the Sultan in 1354 and this allowed him to meet his scholars from Maghrib and Andalusia who visited the court of Fez, including prominent figures such as Muhammad bin Asafar, a chronic authority from Rakesh, Muhammad al-Maqari, the Grand Jari to face from Tlemkan, and Muhammad bin Ahmad al-Sharif al-Hassani, known as al-Alavi, an expert in intellectual and rational sciences. When situation became unfavorable, Ibn Khaladun sought to leave. For instance, he wanted to return to Tunis from Fez, but the ruler was reluctant, fe uh, fearing collusion with the ruler of Tlemkan. Eventually permitted to depart on the condition he didn't go to Tlemkin, Ibn Khaladun chose to travel to Andalusia where he served under the Sultan Muhammad of Karnara and made renowned wazir and writer Ibn al-Khatib. After falling out of favor with Sultan Muhammad Ibn Khaladun moved to Bugi in middle of 1365 AD where he was appointed chamberlain managing state's affairs and relations between Sultan and his subjects. He was warmly received with much ceremony a day he found to be memorable. Besides his chamberlain duties, he was also entrusted with delivering the Friday sermon at the Mosque of Sitawil. However, as before, issues rose, conflict arose between Muhammad and his cousin Sultan Abu Abad and the ruler of Constantine. Abu Abbas marched on Bugay in 1366 and defeated and killed Muhammad. Some of the city's inhabitants asked Ibn Khaladun to take power and proclaim one of the Muhammad's sons as a ruler, but he declined. Instead, he handed over Bugi to Abu Abbas, who retained Ibn Khaladun in his former role. So this is enough friends for this episode and stay tuned for the part of the two of Ibn Khaladun, a journey through history, where we'll uncover more about this uh, the remarkable scholar and his enduring influence on our world. Thank you for joining us.